Hello, this short podcast is brought to you by the website receivedtextsociety.com, which glories in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Holy Scriptures, better known as the King James Bible that transformed the world. We invite you to come and take a quick look at the site. And here it is. You can see the gospels right there. And if you click here, it'll show you the uh, Bible verses that the new Bibles have deleted and just great videos to educate you. Again, that is receivedtextsociety.com, and we, um, we hope you'll come and visit. Thanks. Hello, I am former Mormon missionary, and you can call me Han Rivas, which means he is saved or he is rescued in Swedish. Um, I wanted to tell you that the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, that says if you trust three things, you'll have eternal life that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and, he, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Uh, before I kick this video off, I want to remind everybody that when I was a Mormon, I was proud of the word Mormon. And in 1989, Ezra Tapp Benson sang in general conference, I am a Mormon boy. But today, Russell M. Nelson has said, if you use the word, the word Mormon, you're doing the work of Satan. Um, well, we got a bigger problem with, um, uh, the, uh, than just the use of the word Mormon. We, Russell M. Nelson uh, has not only contradicted um, uh, Ezra Taft Benson and people like Gordon B. Hinckley and Spencer W. Kimball and, and, and uh, Monson, who used the word Mormon and revered the word Mormon, uh, but now he's contradicting the first vision by what he's saying about the Pope. Let me show you just a little clip by Ezra Tapp Benson singing, I am a Mormon boy. And he also says, I might be envied by a king, I am a Mormon boy. Then we'll get back to the other subject. So let me minimize myself and play a little bit of this. A Mormon boy, a Mormon boy. I am a Mormon boy. I might be envied by a king, for I am a Mormon boy. I love you. <laughs> and you. If somebody told you to go up and down at the same time, would they confuse you? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 33 says, God is not the author of confusion. Now, did Joseph Smith um, find out when he prayed in 1820 that the Pope was uh, not corrupt and that he was, among other things, gracious, uh, concerned, loving, and a capable leader of the Catholic people? Is that what Jesus Christ said? Did Jesus Christ say, well, there's one church you can join because they have a great leader. This is the Pope, and the Pope is gracious, concerned, loving, and capable. Is that what Jesus Christ said to Joseph Smith in the first, uh, in the first vision? And if somebody came along saying that, um, that the Pope was all of those things, would they be at odds with Jesus Christ himself? And would they be at odds with the story that Joseph Smith told, which is in the history of the church and the Pearl of Great Price? Would, uh, would they be at odds with that story? I am at the website churchofjesuschrist.org and you can see what this says. It says, Joseph Smith, the history contains an account of the first vision. Joseph Smith history became scripture in 1880 when the Pearl of Great Price was canonized as one of the standard works of the church. Again, this first vision became scripture in 1880. Take a look at what Russell M. Nelson said about the Pope after he met with him. We had a most cordial unforgettable experience with His Holiness. Keep in mind that in the LDS scriptures in the history of the church, uh, Jesus Christ and God the Father allegedly told Joseph Smith not to join any church 
because all their creeds were abominations and all their professors were corrupt. Now we have Russell M. Nelson calling the Pope his holiness. With his holiness. Well, I am here at the Church of Jesus Christ.org, and remember, this has been scripture since 1880. And let's take a look at this. Joseph Smith said, I was answered by God the Father in Jesus Christ that I must join none of them. None of the churches on the face of the earth was true, for they were all wrong. And the personage, Jesus Christ, who addressed me, said that all their creeds were an abomination in his sight, that those professors were all corrupt. What changed? Why is the Catholic Pope now not corrupt? Jesus Christ again forbade me to join with any of them, with any of them. And again, I'm going back to this. Why were all of those professors corrupt? Well, right here, it, uh, Jesus Christ allegedly said, they draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They teach for doctrines the commandments of men having a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Again, these are LDS scriptures. Then he says, what a sweet, wonderful man the Pope is. And uh, Brother Ballard, who's next to him, also calls the Pope his holiness. Take a look. What a sweet, wonderful man he is. We explained to His Holiness that we work side by side, that we've had projects with uh, Catholic Relief Services all over the world in over 43 countries. We've, we've uh, been shoulder to shoulder as partners in trying to relieve suffering and uh, trying to help people that are struggling. So let's listen to what Brother Ballard says meant everything. Was it when uh, the Pope and Russell M. Nelson discussed uh, that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and how we needed to spread that gospel, that good news to the world? Uh, no, this is what he said meant everything. For me, the moment when President Nelson actually embraced the Pope and they gave each other a hug as we left, it was everything. And a greeting in Spanish. Everything. What a sweet, wonderful man he is. Now he's going to say how fortunate the Catholic people are to have such a capable leader. And how fortunate the Catholic people are to have such a gracious, concerned, loving, and capable leader. Um, so if the Catholics have such a capable, wonderful leader, why are there essentially 67,000 Mormon missionaries out there who are primarily targeting uh, Catholics to come under the leadership of Russell M. Nelson? And how fortunate the Catholic people are to have such a gracious, concerned, loving, and capable leader. Is this consistent with the first vision? Listen carefully. And how fortunate the Catholic people are to have such a gracious, concerned, loving, and capable leader. Let me show you an excerpt from the Mormon film that I showed on my mission uh, regarding what uh, Jesus Christ and God the Father thought of all the other religions and people like the Pope. Um, this, is what, this is what I showed. Um, take a look. Then I asked the personages which of all the churches I should join. I was answered that I must join none of them, for they were all wrong, and that none of them was acknowledged of God as his church and kingdom and I was expressly commanded to go not after them, at the same time receiving a promise that the fullness of the gospel should at some future time be made known unto me. I want to be as fair as possible uh, to the group that calls itself the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So here is uh, from their website, the Joseph Smith History, 
And uh, I'm just going to scroll down so you can read uh, the whole thing. And uh, let's get down here to the apparition. Here we go. Um, he, saw, he saw two personages, it says here. It says, when the light rested upon me, I saw two personages. And so the father says, this is my beloved son, hear him. And then he says, my object in going to inquire of the Lord was to know which of all the sects or religions was right, that I might know which to join. No sooner, therefore, did I get possession of myself so as to be able to speak that I asked the personages who stood above me in the light, which of all the sects was right. For at this time, it had never entered into my heart that all were wrong. All were wrong. And which I should join. I was answered that I must join none of them, for they were all wrong. And the personage who addressed me said that all their creeds were an abomination. In his sight, that those professors were all wrong corrupt. You can read the rest uh, for yourself. First Nephi chapter 14 verse 10 has an angel telling Nephi, you either belong to the church of the Lamb of God, the Mormon church, or by default you belong to the church of the devil, the mother of abominations, the whore of the whole earth. This is first Nephi 14:10. And as Doctrine and Covenant section 1 verse 30 says, the Mormon church is the only true and living church on the face of the planet. So it's interesting that Ezra Taft Benson could sing, I am a Mormon boy in general conference as the Mormon prophet and be revered for it, saying that even a, a king would envy a Mormon boy. Now, if you do that, it's a victory for Satan. And yet, the same Russell M. Nelson who says that is now lifting up the Pope to a level that is so high, he's calling the Pope his holiness. Again, the Gospels found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Have a great day.